I am. Hi, Terry. Sorry. I'm dealing with my son and niece. You can hear me, yeah? I can, can you? Hello. Hi there, there. Welcome. We'll, uh, we'll just give it a couple of minutes and uh, see if anyone else is going to join us. Okay, well, uh, I guess we should get started. So, uh, what I wanted to talk about today really was um, getting things moving on the uh, reference architecture. Um, so, uh, let me just give you a, a, uh, a quick tour of what we've set up so far, and then uh, hopefully we, we can uh, we can move to. Uh, Filling some of that uh, out. So, uh, if I switch over to the um, the, be the best practices website, uh, you should be able to see that uh, I've now added, added a new architecture section in in this version of the the documentation. So this this is a, a draft of bunch of the uh, the current document documentation, so uh, it, it's accessible but not published on the on the on the site. And um, I'm going to this is in the chat. So. so We've got here is template plus something we're going to need to start to fill out. 
Uh, so the the way I think I think need to work with this is is following sort of the basic structure of the TOGAF methodology, uh, which is to pro provide an architecture vision. And so uh, that means giving an overview view of what, what the key concepts are uh, and, and spelling things out so that people understand what we actually mean when we're using the terminology that we're, we're using within continuous delivery. So, uh, in terms of what that represents from a documentary perspective, uh, these are the, the first four sort of headline pieces that is that we, we need to get written up. Um, so, so views and viewpoints, uh, is, is going to be the, the biggest part, part of the the work to start with um and what i mean by this is that we need to capture the viewpoint sorry, hey, sorry terry the, sorry to it, cut it, you off there um i think we're having issue with your audio your your voice keeps cutting in and out okay let me see if i can go to a different microphone hang on a sec Right. Does that sound any better? Yes, that's much better. Okay. Right. All right. So, yeah. So, views and viewpoints. Uh, basically, what we're looking at here is uh, for for any organisation that wants to implement uh, continuous delivery. Um, we are going to be encountering a large number of stakeholders uh, who each have different concerns in that space and so uh, they're all going to have a a partial view of the problem and uh, that means that um, from their perspective they will have uh, an, an individual view of what they need to do with continuous delivery uh, so that it's relevant for for their goals and their concerns in, in within the organization now the challenge is that um, very few people will have a complete view from the organization's perspective so what tends to happen is that people grasp onto uh, a partial set of goals and uh, try and implement you know, one part of the methodology without being aware of how that will impact on other stakeholders and the, the, the overarching process within the organization. So what we need to do in, in that space is capture all of those viewpoints and document the view as held by each of those stakeholders. So um, within this section, uh, I've expanded the, this out um, to give an early list of the individual stakeholders who are likely to be impacted and this is not a complete list so one of the things that we need to do is um, make sure that we've you've got a uh, a full set of viewpoints here from any you know relevant perspectives within a, a given organization uh, but this is our starting point um, and then for uh, for each viewpoint, we need to actually capture what that viewpoint is, and then 
spell out the view of the stakeholder who's holding that viewpoint and then address what the what the value is um, from the perspective of implementing continuous delivery uh, and potentially also address any uh, challenges or uh, potential issues that might exist uh, for that particular stakeholder viewpoint. Now, uh, what I've done here is uh, give a, a, a a very basic example and we'll probably want to expand on this um, but this is from the perspective of the end customer so by end customer i mean the person who is consuming the product that someone is using continuous delivery to create in the first place uh, so uh, this is trying to show that we've got a we've got a chain here um, and that there are multiple stakeholders, um, not just within the organization, but also uh, focusing on what the organization is actually doing. Um, so, uh, so what I would ideally like is to get some contributors working on this section of the documentation so that we can we can start to fill out these these views and and, and get a good picture uh, of all of this section of the doc then um, going back to the overview uh, we then need to look at the drivers and constraints that will be um, behind any organization actually doing a rollout of continuous delivery. So these are the, the fundamental justifications for why you're trying to adopt continuous delivery as a methodology um, and any key constraints that might prevent you from implementing you know, some part or uh, might stop you from being able to do certain features of the, of the process. Uh, then the, 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 the next two pieces are um, capabilities and then the assessment of readiness. So the capabilities is really uh, looking at uh, what what skills the organization already has in this space. So what, what learnings are already relevant. Um, and then the assessment readiness is really a, a gap analysis to say, okay, these are the parts that we've got. These are the things that we don't have. Uh, and therefore we need to uh, understand which pieces of work we're going to do in order to implement this methodology. Uh, but this is also the place where you you confirm that senior stakeholders are committed to this and uh, and and get a go ahead for what is effectively business change. So I think this is um, really the starting point of this reference architecture work. And uh, once we've got this piece in place, we we can do. Um, uh, a sort of first round of publishing, so we can um, we can put this out there on on the production site, uh, and then move on to the the next stages of you know, further documentation. So, does anyone have any questions ab about this part? So um, a question from my side, Barry. So do we have a, a plan to reach out to the different um, interested parties to get the viewpoints? Or what, do you have any idea how we can get the, the right viewpoints and the different individuals that you have listed in there? So pro probably the easiest thing to do is for us to uh, encourage some contributors 
uh, who have um, some, com some commercial experience working within product delivery businesses. So, uh, for example, people with product management experience uh, or people operating at a CTO level or an architecture governance level, uh, because th this is all stuff that would be very familiar to uh, anyone who's um, had to take that bigger picture strategic view of how to do technology change with, within a sort of medium to larger organization. So hopefully we shall have um, plenty of people uh, in, involved with the CDF already who have some experience in this space. Uh, and then we can also reach out to um, mem the members to ask them to see if they can uh, nominate or volunteer people from within their organizations to uh, come and contribute. Okay. Um, and that, but we should stick with the with the members, right? So this, 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 there's two bits of this, um, and and so we'll we'll probably be able to access a fairly wide audience because of that. Um, so the the views and viewpoints piece is uh, is sort of continuous delivery agnostic uh, in that everyone who has worked with a stakeholder or has been a stakeholder in one of these roles will be able to spell out the the viewpoint and and the view from that perspective because you know it, they'll have been very very familiar with what that looks like within any software delivery organization and you know in, in many cases we we've got people who are currently in those roles who are contributing within the CDF. So we shouldn't have a problem in getting access to plenty of people who have those perspectives. Uh, where it then becomes more specialized is uh, in the piece around uh, spelling out the implications. Uh, and, and so that's where we'll have to then add to the the basic information to say okay here are the parts that are relevant from a continuous delivery perspective and this is uh, how this is likely to impact you now some um some members will already be on that journey and will be able to feed back some of the learning experiences that they've already had um and uh, for everyone else this will be a useful resource to help them uh, set their expectations for what they're likely to encounter in uh, in various areas. Okay, thank you, Derek. So, I mean, uh, most of these roles are sort of classic stakeholder roles within your typical uh, software delivery organization uh, and I'm, I'm sure we've got a whole bunch of people already uh, in, involved who've, who've worn one or more of these hats and, and can help out uh, where we might need to explicitly reach out and ask for additional help is from say the legal or brand management perspective uh, where we might have less experience um, within the foundation today. So um, how do we actually update this? Well, um, the, the site itself is uh, within the CD Foundation GitHub repository, so uh, we can 
basically treat this as a set of pull requests against a branch on that repository. Uh, so you'll you'll find that uh, there's a reference architecture branch already set up, and there is a um, a pull request for that branch against the main uh, release. Uh, but what we need to do is get people contributing against the branch initially to fill this out. Uh, and then once we're happy with the state of the content against that branch, then I'll, I'll merge that back into the main site and we'll, uh, we'll do a, a release at, at that level. So hopefully that gives you a picture of some of the work that we need to do at the moment. So this is the bit where I ask for volunteers. I'm not going to make you uh, stand up and say yes in the session, but uh, if you want to reach out to me um, and uh, you know, express an interest in uh, any part of this that you'd like to uh, add some content to, then that would uh, be very helpful. Um, but I think what we probably need to do is put together some messaging that we can then communicate uh, to the rest of the organization and the membership uh, to try and encourage some contributors to come and get involved in this piece of work. Uh, now, I don't know if anyone's got any suggestions as to the best way to go about that, but uh, that would certainly be useful. Yeah, about uh, finding people to contribute to this, like uh, I can try to help with that because when I reached out to people and invited them for the strategy meeting, governing board strategy meeting, I heard many positive comments from the people who joined the meeting. So I can go back to them and say, this is now happening. Could you please come and contribute these you know, perspectives or pass this to one of your colleagues from within your organization and get their input made part of this and that could also help us to reach out to additional people saying that these people are contributing these organizations are contributing maybe we should take a look at this and make sure to get your perspectives in this so that is something at least for the ones i talked about the reference architecture i can do that for five people from different organizations yeah, so you can, for example, link directly into that preview documentation. Um, so, so there's a way to say, look, here's a list of things that we need to fill out, um, make it clearer to, to people uh, uh, where they can get involved. And you know, also it helps to show people the, the, the scale of what needs to be done. And right now we're, we're talking about sort of a few paragraphs rather than having to write war and peace so it's a, it's not a huge commitment from any one individual contributor uh, but uh, if we get half a dozen people then we'll very quickly uh, be able to fill this out and uh, get a, a, a good collaborative worldview Another question about like the pull requests uh, flow and so on. Some people may not be familiar with GitHub or they you know, they prefer to contribute in different ways. I guess it should be fine to you know have a Google Doc or something and ask them to you know give us Google Doc. We can fix publishing your contribution ourselves. Yeah, we can uh, we can certainly work around any challenges in in that space. So um, oh, welcome to uh, Melissa and Thomas. Um, let me just switch back and, and, and show you what we've been discussing here. Um, so we've got a, um, a draft overview of uh, the, the first section of the reference architecture which has been added to the uh, the CF best practices website. Now this is uh, on a 
preview version of the site. Um, let me put the link in the chat again so that you can see it. So I don't think there's a history in the chat. So what we're trying to do is uh, get some contributors to help fill out these perspectives. Um, and uh, the primary area being in the views and viewpoints section, where what we want to do is document uh, the sets of concerns relating to each of these classes of stakeholder. And I've got a example here where we need to explain the viewpoint that that stakeholder is, is operating from, so how they see the world, what their actual view is, and then any value add relating to continuous delivery or any issues or concerns that might come from uh, a continuous delivery implementation that are relevant to to that viewpoint uh, and the, the purpose of doing this is so that everyone feels that their perspective has been understood and included in the thinking behind a strategic piece of work like this so from an organizational perspective this is a sizable piece of business change um, not everyone will be supportive of that business change and so uh, an architecture like this is about showing that everyone's views have been taken into account and and also demonstrating basically what's in it for me from an individual stakeholder perspective and what usually happens when you work through problems at this level is you find out that the organizational uh, organization actually has conflicting demands on different stakeholders and so you know one group wants to do it and another group doesn't want to do it because one group is being measured against metrics that mean it's good to do continuous delivery and another group has a different set of metrics that conflict and then you need to actually get senior executives to adjust those metrics to align them to the overarching strategy uh, so um, I hope that's giving you a, a bit of a view on what we're trying to achieve here at the moment. Uh, these other sections are all empty at the moment. Uh, we, we need to fill them out with some content. That is a really good start. I love the different viewpoints approach. Um, and are we, and I'm sorry, I didn't, I missed the beginning, but are we looking to reach out to people in these positions to get review, to get their input? So, yes, I, I, ideally what I'd like is to get some contributions from people who are, are actually in those roles or have worked closely with those roles in, in the recent past. Uh, so, so that we're we're actually eating our own dog food and getting the customers of this reference architecture product to actually tell us what their problem is, rather than us uh, impose our theory about what their problem is. That makes sense. Uh, so, um, my expectation is that. It should be fairly easy for us to get to talk with people who are in, say, product management roles, um, our CTO roles, or architecture roles, um, and and they should all be people who are fairly familiar with this sort of approach anyway. Um, so it's probably an exercise they've already done within their organisation at some point in the past couple of years. Uh, so, so we should be able to cover off quite a lot of that from that perspective. Uh, 
and obviously when we get to the technical roles we've we've got lots of people within the foundation who are in those technical roles and be happy to contribute so that's easy enough where it gets a bit more challenging is where we're looking at things like uh, legal roles or brand management stuff like that where we might not necessarily have active contributors in those spaces at the moment um, but where we should have you know some people in member organizations who uh, may be volunteered to come and help out and I, I think the the process of actually going through this will will help to get people to understand why we're doing this and what it means because uh, it's it's all a bit theoretical until you go through one of these exercises for the first time and then it suddenly starts to really make sense when you sit down and and think about well what is the viewpoint from my job position you know, what's what's the perspective i should be taking what's important to me what where are my blind spots uh, and uh, and i i hope that you know, when we've done this piece it will suddenly become clearer why it can be hard to implement continuous delivery even when you've got a whole team of engineers who are chomping at the bit to go and do it so i have a quick question on this um so based on the best practices right is there going to be so this is like a best practices guide so is there going to be like an implementation of how these practices look you know based on you know just this is my first time attending this meeting, so I apologize if it's a it's been answered before and such. But uh, like based off this, is there going to be? Our, is the next step going to be like, hey, let's create some kind of implement, implementation that takes takes all these best practices and kind of shows it in a, in a form that customer or whoever is going to look at this going to fo uh, can follow? Yeah, so um, that's a very good question, and um, and it's it's the the sort of medium term goal of this piece of work. Um, the, the the way we're trying to tackle this is, if you like, uh, uh, an inverted pyramid balanced on a pyramid in that uh, we're starting at the very top with the methodology itself. So this is continuous delivery as a theoretical methodology for improving your ability to deliver product to market quickly. And that's what the best practices site is all about. And then what we're doing with this piece is now saying, OK, well, you've got the theory. But here's the impact when you start to apply that theory to your organization. And this is who it's going to affect. And this is how it's going to change the way they need to work in order for this to pay off for you. Um, and then that, if you like, comes down to a, a, a point, which is, okay, so what, what are the specifics? And then the, the way we're going to approach that is to uh, then uh, have um, uh, each of the relevant uh, CDF projects provide a perspective saying, okay, here's how you implement best practice and the reference architecture using this technology. Uh, so, so that way we're, uh, we're not mandating a, a single reference implementation, but what we're saying is here's the, here's the theory and, and, and the concepts, and then here's how e each of the existing implementations takes that and turns it into a tool that you can use to apply that with within your organization got it that makes sense okay um yeah so i'm just coming like this is my first time so like I, i'm coming in from um more of a, a, a software supply chain security aspect so we've been actually using a lot of tecton and uh, tecton uh, tecton pipelines tecton chains and we kind of built out like a reference architecture you know, through through the CNCF, basically, uh, uh, you know, the, the supply chain security best practices white paper that came out and the reference architecture that came out for that. 
So, you know, if the if the if the uh, community is interested, I can kind of show that off also. But basically, it's like an implementation of like how supply chain security can be used in this kind of context. You know, in a in a CI CD pipeline with with all the controls in place and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So that that's exactly the the sort of thing that we're looking for uh, to go into the the community side of of this. So um, let me switch back over to this. So if you're familiar with the um, with the best practices site, there's a community section here, uh, which is set up and ready to go for uh, you know, white papers and discussion um, of, of, about exactly those types of things. So uh, if, if you'd like to work on something in that area, then feel free to send me a, a sort of pricey of what you'd like to produce. And then uh, if we're uh, comfortable with the, the the content and you know general framework of that then you know you're welcome to then create and submit a PR and we'll uh, we'll merge it into into this section Parth, are we missing a security related title or position here maybe we should treat that as a whole separate section so we we have the uh, the the CISO viewpoint so nice in, oh, okay. In the okay. Moment. Um, and yes. we can we can expand these. So if you feel that there are multiple different viewpoints that we need to incorporate, then we can do that. Um, I suspect what we'll actually probably do with some of these is um, have a a headline title, but then expand this out with a set of tags to say. You know, this applies to the following job descriptions, um, so so that we can make it easier for people to search on you know, what their role is and and link into a relevant viewpoint that sits with that. I like that idea. Yeah, I mean, I think the right. I think security should be on the mind, right? I mean, everybody in that in terms of the views that we kind of listed out there. Um, I think it's it's how much I think it, in the best practices, I think it should be like you should be paying attention to security, right? Security is not something as an afterthought, but that each of these roles are kind of responsible for it and how maybe each one. So maybe there should be a section for like, how does this help in terms of security in my viewpoint also? Maybe maybe that's that's worth adding here. Yeah, and I, and I think we should explicitly when we get down to the implementation roles like you know the software engineering roles and things like that we should also express the security perspective as part of that that viewpoint. Um, we're also operating within the context of the broader best practices. So um, you'll see that we've got software supply chain um, as a piece in here. Um, and in fact, that spans four major categories of which the supply chain security is, is one. Um, so you know we we tried to capture a high level view of um, best practice in this space. This is a work in progress. So if we find that there are important things that are missing from the overarching methodology docs, then we can update those. Uh, but ideally, what I like to see is as we move into the um, the architecture section we start to expand on some of this now this is this piece is phase one of the reference architecture um and i would expect us to need to expand on uh some of this you know, typically if you were following togaf you would have a you know a business architecture and a technical architecture etc cetera, etc cetera. now it, it's it's not a, a, a perfect fit for what we're doing here because those things immediately get into the weeds of a particular organization's process. Um, but there will be areas where we're likely to want to expand on you know, some of the challenges that are likely to exist um, at a, um, a higher level. Um, and we can include that in the in the next round of documentation for for this architecture section. I 
So um, any other questions on this? Anything that I've missed? I'm sure there's lots I've missed. Well, I, I think you know, we we need to start somewhere. So this is uh, kind of a nice high level perspective. As we go through this process, it will become more obvious where the gaps are. Uh, and so uh, I, I suggest that we um, we keep a track of any you know, key pieces that we think need to be included in this documentation uh, as issues on the best practices site repo so feel free to post stuff in in there and use that as a um, a memory so that we can uh, um, we can come back to those and add them as we as we get further down the chain So um, does anyone have any specific questions about next steps? Uh, or does anyone want to uh, volunteer anyone from their organization to come and get involved? Uh, So I know something I'm going to do is send this recording to some people that I would love to get them involved. Um, so can you explain really quickly, just if they want to contribute to one of these, what's their first step? They just go to the GitHub repo and start opening issues or open PRs? Yeah, just so, so the, 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 the repo itself um, can, can be found within the CD Foundation GitHub. Uh, and uh, you'll find that it, 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 it's called Best Practices Site. Uh, and uh, the 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 main site uh, is at uh, best practices cd foundation, um, but this is the the view that you're seeing here is a is a preview, uh, which is publicly accessible, so you can actually uh, see what's in here, um, but it's not the official published version of the site. Now uh, we can uh, we can take contributions as pull requests against the reference architecture branch, uh, and I'm happy for people to just start firing speculative PRs in. Uh, more than welcome. Uh, but if you'd like to start a, a discussion first, then feel free to raise an issue on on that repo or come and join the conversation in the best practices slack channel or just uh, reach out to to me and uh, we can have a conversation i think the nice thing about this piece of work is uh, it it lets a much broader audience get involved with uh, with the work that we're doing within the cd foundation um, uh, this this is all going to be very non-technical as as a, a piece of work. It's it's all documentation, um, uh, but it relies upon people having you know, good hands-on experience of actually working within software delivery, uh, and uh, not just as a technical contributor, but but also uh, as someone who has a perspective on product delivery rather than just software delivery. So, so this is the chance for people to get involved and really have a say from, from the perspective of what it actually takes to take a product to market uh, rather than just the engineering part of that. Uh, and the reality is within continuous delivery, the hard problems are generally in the non-technical spaces because uh, 
you know, we've got lots of tools for accelerating our pipelines and uh, you know, improving the, the way we automate our code delivery. Um, but if you're trying to speed up the legal process or you know, brand management um, or all of those other uh, aspects of product commercialization, um, then that's actually much more challenging. And that's where a lot of the sticking points are to success in this space. Okay, um, anyone have anything else they'd like to add at this point? A huge shout out to you, Terry, for diving in and getting that started and at least, you know, giving us something to look at to begin with. This is excellent. Well, it's, it's one of those things where it's much, much easier to understand if you can see what it is we're trying to do and where the gaps are. Uh, so rather than constantly having to ex explain this stuff and get people to understand, it's much easier to just build a framework and then say what we need to do is fill, fill in all the gaps. Um, and there's, there's, there's probably a couple of rounds of this that we can do. You know, once we've filled in this first set and published this, then there's an, another level of detail that we could then go into and, and expand on that again. Um, uh, and and we, can, we can keep doing that until we feel that we've got a really rich resource that um, is properly communicating the challenges in the space. But I think this, uh, although it sounds like a big undertaking, um, it, it's actually you know, fairly nicely time boxed. We should be able to pull this together quite quickly um, and get it to the point where it's useful information that's tidy enough that we can publish it and it stands alone. It might not be all of the answers, but it will certainly be another piece of valuable reference that people can start to study whilst we're working on the next phase. So again, I want us to be doing continuous delivery on our documentation as well as uh, everything else. So it would be nice to, to move fairly quickly through the, this phase, um, get some momentum going um, and you know, get something out you know, in weeks to months rather than months to years as it was with the original site. Okay, well, if everybody's happy with that, then uh, I think it's probably a good place to wind up. And um, uh, you know, feel free to uh, reach out to me or put people in touch with me, and uh, and we'll get this started and get moving. Thank you. Thanks, Terry. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Bye.